This podcast is brought to you by KimPower, the reliable, quick, and scalable EV charging solutions for everyone and everywhere. And StarCharge, the largest EV charging manufacturer in the world and is also a provider of residential and commercial battery storage. This episode is also made possible by the support we get from Fort Collins Kia. If you are in the market for any electric Kia, not only do they never add market adjustments, they will deliver your car to you anywhere in the 48 contiguous states for out of spec viewers. More information in the link in the show notes. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the Out of Spec podcast, where we delve into the electrifying world of electric vehicles, bringing you the latest insights, updates, and discussions. And in today's episode, we are diving into the recently speculated upon, kind of not really leaked, but specifications of the Tesla Model 3 Highland, or the refresh, with perhaps ludicrous mode, super huge performance enhancements that a lot of people are very excited to see. And joining us today is Jerome, who runs our Out of Spec Renew channel. You are, you know, an expert, I would say, a lot in electric vehicles and automotive tech and like the conversions of EVs. So thank you, Jerome, for coming on to the podcast today. What are you up to lately across the pond? All right. Um, big news, uh, almost breaking news. So as you said, we're just... Uh, speculating but the information are coming from all over the place and they are the same from different sources from china from the us from europe so it looks like the specs are, are fixed for the new model 3 island performance and we're talking about a huge uh, increase in performance as far as uh, maybe not top speed but definitely power and torque and well the whole the, the thing the funny thing is it's still the same car as far as the same name but i think the whole drivetrain the whole car is completely different i have a 2020 um, model 3 performance and i don't think those two cars will share any part in common or very little um so that's going to be quite interesting but uh, as far as performance we are talking about up to 620 horsepower with a power boost available, bringing up to 700 horsepower. So if you mm -hmm. remember when the Model 3 performance came out, it was closer to 450 horsepower. So again, a significant increase in power. Zero to 60 should be also significantly increased. Um, again, speculation, but should be around the, the, the zero to 60 should be around the 2.8 um, second. So quite significant. Um, top speed may not go much higher because to be fair there's nowhere you can actually go much faster <laughs> already we exactly. used to go up there, yeah i mean 162 miles per hour is um what we think it will be which is 260 kilometers per hour which is top speed you could do pretty much anywhere in the world anyway so that should be quick enough but also uh with the island model tesla has really focused on being on bringing a more uh, a quieter car so top speed might not be the main thing they will offer but a much quieter much smoother experience will be what we deliver what they need to improve upon is on the suspension so suspension and brakes so tesla model 3 performance was uh, a very good car but uh, when you track the car after a few laps um the braking uh, performance reduces and the suspension on, on roads is not always the best. So I think we will see a significant improvement on, on both of these aspects. Hmm. And that would the, make sense. Yeah. You know. And the key, a key aspect of the new model will be the new battery pack, which is estimated to be uh, around 75 kilowatt hour, most likely made by Panasonic with still 2170 form factor cells uh so not a revolution but an improvement because um 75 kilowatt hour is a relatively small pack for a high performance car so that would mean potentially a lighter tesla model 3 performance uh which is exactly what you want on a performance car so which helps with everything else including braking and suspension mm -hmm. so yes these are the main aspects of again all those sources we get uh, from around the world seems to bring the same uh, spec. Um, as far as the interior, we only anticipate the front seats to be different, uh, more like sport seats. And we've seen several images um, 
of those uh, new seats. Uh, mm -hmm. On the outside, the front bumper will be redesigned, uh, most likely to offer a better airflow to get to the front brakes. And the rear will have a slightly different uh, lower part. And also the rear spoiler will be slightly more pronounced, but um, nothing crazy. However, it's the first time the performance actually get dedicated panels uh, including the front bumper and the rear bumper, because the previous generation Model 3 was just a regular uh, Tesla Model 3 with a front spoiler and red brakes. So you can definitely tell if a car is a ludicrous uh, or performance. Um, but yeah, um, my, what I feel is it's way more than a new performance. It's definitely um, higher performance car so the ludicrous badge is really deserved because anything over 600 horsepower in a compact sedan is just ludicrous mm -hmm. <laughs> so it's definitely quite something yeah so i look forward Absolutely. to uh, you know taking one for a spin and on the track in particular and compare it to the previous generation if it's lighter it's, this is going to be fantastic on the track i mean i i think some of some of the sightings have also been like on the Nürburgring, you know, all this testing. So it's really a huge emphasis on performance, which makes sense. And you've been driving around, you know, a Model 3, not a refresh. I mean, this seems like even more than a than a refresh, like, a you know, a rebirth, like kind of just a yeah. whole new approach. Like you said, there might not be any really shared pieces between the Tesla Model 3 you've been driving around and this one. And like you said, with all these, advancements you know if you're gonna have this crazy speed these this new drivetrain then obviously the according changes with the brakes and suspension and wheels and all that focus on the performance driving experience seems to be there do you feel like they're hitting all the all the marks here from all this you know speculation of course you haven't driven it yeah. around but like is there anything missing where you were like man i haven't heard anything about this aspect that i can't wait to see what they do well i think the the only thing we haven't heard about is the final price which is impossible to know um, but it's always been good and most likely it will be relatively priced high at the beginning because the demand will be quite significant and, and then it will lower to so, so do the same for any uh, model so it's hard to tell where they will be placing uh, the car it could be 65 it could be seventy five thousand dollars and they would you know, sell as many as they could produce so we'll see I'm sure yeah. yeah, and um, if if you're not tuning in on YouTube, then feel free to come over here because we are also accompanying our conversation by uh, these photos that are on Motor Trend that were found or taken in Spain when this was seen. You can see the ludicrous badge, and then also you can see the, the ultra red paint, which is a beautiful <laughs> color. My dad got his Model S plaid in ultra red, and it's just beautiful, deep red. Love it. And then we also see photos of you know the unwrapping of one of these Teslas in black too, which mm -hmm. I do like, like the subtler colors the kind of you know really sleek let me just sneak through here kind of vibe and it's black on so, black on black so the, yeah. the the wheels are also black and it will be a new style uh, most yes. likely 20 inch as as previously um i do not have information about the the tires uh, i would think they would still go for the michelin um pilot sport tires because they are fantastic on the road and on the track so and and it looks like the wheels might be slightly larger, especially in the back, or they might have a different offset. But the car feels more, feels wider in the back, which could bring, um, could be the reason, the reason could be that the new motor is being used. So the speculation mm -hmm. is, is it will still be a two motor configuration, most likely mm -hmm. using the Palladium uh, motor we've seen on the uh, late, late model, Model S's. Uh, so that would be quite mm. interesting because you would get close to the power of the Model S in a much more compact, lighter, and less expensive uh, package. So, okay, <laughs> yeah, so with, going back to your question, it just uh, yeah. ticks all the boxes. <laughs> Okay, yeah. good. That's good to hear. And so, you yeah. know, we're seeing it more around, you know, it's being spotted. There's more and more people talking about what we, we think we found in terms of specs and the speculations about the specs. Yeah. Is this pointing to like how soon we're going to see this come to the market? What do you think? Yeah, I think we're talking weeks, maybe month. Um, but right, uh, I mean, the, the vehicle is ready. It's been filmed for um, 
for advertisements and videos by the company. Uh, we've seen it all over the place. Uh, as you mentioned, number green, we've seen it in America, in China, in Europe. So it is being tested in, it is in its final you know, testing period. So Yes. So I think we will see that very soon. Um, it's been seen all over the world. That is very exciting. And I mean, from your point of view, are is this what people are waiting for? Do they want this performance vehicle? Do you think it'll be really competitive? Is it just like a fun new EV toy to play with? Like how big of a splash do you think this is going to make in the EV space? I mean, Tesla already does really well with their offerings. So yes, it do not need a performance, but it's a hollow car and it brings a new, um, type of clientele to the brand, really. And I think any brand needs, again, a halo product just to bring people to the brand. And because it can just produce this type of product, it's just fantastic, you can actually do it. So yeah, we've seen it in, in America, we've seen it in China, and we've seen it in Europe. So it should be coming very soon. We're talking weeks, maybe months, um, but I anticipate deliveries would be uh, by the summer. Fun, are you gonna get in line? Well, that's, that's the thing. That's one point I wanted to bring is my car has uh, FSD and I want to keep FSD. Mm, so yes. uh, Tesla has offered last month the FSD. Uh, if you want to buy a new car, you would, could carry on with your own FSD. So that's something to consider. Yeah, definitely. Certainly. But yeah, it's very I tempting. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's such a high value. Like you paid for the FSD. You, yeah. I mean, people love to use it. You would want that to switch over. And I'm, I am glad that Tesla has added that option. That wasn't really the case before, uh, mm -hmm. but I think it, it makes sense. I mean, you paid for it. You might as well get yeah, it on your might next, as well use it. Next yeah. one. But yeah. it, it's quite ironic that FSD is becoming so good now. You yeah. don't almost don't need to drive, or soon enough, you won't be be required oh. <laughs> to drive and then you get the best sports sedan <laughs> out there so that's going to be quite something but again it ticks all the boxes because you could you know go on the long trip and yeah. but if you hit the mountains and you want to have fun then you have the best you know performance uh, tool so should be I quite agree. interesting yeah yeah you can have the daily commute the road tripper and the the fun canyon roads uh, experience as well with this so okay i'm excited so maybe yeah. you know it's yeah. we're rounding out on march maybe april maybe may of this year mm -hmm. 2024 we will see the new tesla model 3 performance with perhaps ludicrous and ludicrous plus mode yeah. i mean it is it yeah is as a Briefly mentioned at the very beginning, uh, we anticipate the specs will be 600 horsepower and there will be um, Ludicrous Plus, uh, just like on the Model S, which would bring up to 700 horsepower. Oof. Wow. That's a lot of power. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, that's probably uh, too much, but there's never too much. <laughs> exactly. It's kind of like, yeah, just keep pushing it. Who who yeah. knows how far we can push it? Um, it'll, it'll, that'll be really fun. I'd love to hear our audience, uh, what they think about this. Are you looking for this kind of performance invite into the EV space? I mean, I do think you make a good point where it will let people transfer over, you know, attract a new part of the market, those performance driven drivers and I think it's a really cool offering. Can't wait to see it on the roads. Give it a go. Likewise, yeah. Thank you, Jerome, for coming on and giving me the specs, giving me the lowdown. Can't wait to get the, the price for this and how it's going to roll out into the markets. More details on that. And we will certainly follow up. Let us know what questions you might be curious about so we make sure that we hit them in the podcast coming up that I'm sure we'll be covering the new Tesla Model 3 performance that we're going to see on the roads. Thanks for tuning into the Out of Spec podcast. We will see you next time on the next episode. Have a wonderful rest of your day, y'all. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.